film review. Now, you're going to review Ex Machina. Ex now, Machina. Me- Ex Machina. Tell me what it's all about. Ex Machina. Now, Ex Machina is a science fiction movie. It takes its name from the Greek deus ex machina, which means God from machine. It is a term typically used in theatre, as back in the day it would be a case of... Well, it's actually a term used in pretty much still today for film criticism, where it's a moment in a movie where, out of nowhere, thing comes along to solve the movie. The most famous, the most uh, infamously recited one is War of the Worlds, where at the end germs save the day there's no impact there's no impl- implication that could be the case it just happens and whether or not any movies in the future that i review will have a serious case of deus ex machina is a different thing now the movie itself is a science fiction movie it is about uh, a man called nathan played by oscar isaacs who's also got another film coming out this week which is a, mo- a most violent year which i'm very interested in seeing but back to this movie who is a computer programmer who invites one of his employees, played by uh, Donald Gleeson, to test out an AI. He believes that he's created uh, the first real artificial intelligence, and the movie is based around the Turing test, which many people who saw The Imitation Game will be aware of. It's a test to determine whether or not an AI can be real, can be believed, can be seen as being human. And the movie itself is fascinating. It is a movie which centres itself around the nature of sentience as well as humanity. I found it utterly fascinating on almost every foreseeable level. Uh, The uh, woman who plays Ava, which is the robot in the movie, Alicia Vandeker, is fantastic. Her physical performance in this is near flawless. She is playing a machine. She's playing an android. She's playing a robot. And the way that she moves is very, very, very precise, very exact in a way in which a machine would do. There is no fault to any single movement, be it physical, in the face, or in her gestures. It is all defined and precise. And this may seem like an odd link, but it reminded me a lot of the original RoboCop, as it feels like a physical performance which is realised, and while some people may scoff at it, because it is slightly dun, 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 slightly robotic, that is how they move. That is how a machine moves. It is very precise and very exact. You can pretty much see within the physical makeup of her body, because she has this see-through body, almost the electrical pulses telling her to move from point A to point B, to go from J to gesture, which is fantastic. Her physical performance is a one-part balletic, but on the other side, very natural, organic, and oddly ethereal. Oscar Isaacs, who... I was going to say plays a baddie, but you can't really say there's a bad guy in this movie at <laughs> all because it's, a na- it's the nature of humanity. It's the nature of people. <laughs> any, one per- any one person out of the three main people in this movie you could argue is either a hero or a villain. But Oscar Isaacs is fantastic in this. He plays Nathan, this... I was going to say Mark Zuckerberg as character, someone who in their youth created Blue Book, which is their equivalent of Google. Yeah. And he is this very mercutial, very hard to gauge person, which makes him fascinating because you don't know whether he is this self aggrandizing, very pompous person, or he's a little bit mad, or he's just incredibly intelligent and trying to ma- manipulate people. And that is wonderful. Donald Gleason. It's a performance which, in the wrong hands, could have been very wide-eyed and naive and very childlike in its approach. He, he's the computer programmer who's going to see the robot, and he's, he's all about humanity and stuff, but he isn't. Even in his performances, add those areas of darkness and intrigue and intelligence to it. Even though there are other actors within this movie, it's about these three performers. They're at the very centre of it, which I love. This is a very, very small-scale movie. Do on, It's not about big sci-fi world where robots exist it's about the nature of humans and humanity so so how much scientific knowledge do you actually need going into the film None. because as you don't need any that's you a don't good need point. any because the much like uh, the movie looper from a couple of years ago they have the moment where they say it does it doesn't matter what she's made of or how she's built. I'm not saying this because you don't understand it. I'm saying it because it doesn't matter, is what Oscar Isaac's character effectively says. They have the big moment with say, it doesn't matter if you don't know how robotics work or programming works or indeed what the Turing test is. What matters is the mo- is the uh, message to it, the moral and the ideas behind it. Now, one of the things I was thinking about whilst watching this movie was, what would this movie have been like 20 or maybe even 30 years ago? Now, the idea of this movie is that we're trying to determine 
determine whether or not this machine, this robot, has AI, has its own artificial intelligence or not. But the slight hang-up of that is that watching uh, Alicia Vandeker's performance, you cannot see anything but a human there because... It is a human performer. And I was thinking to myself, well, how would this have gone had this been a practical effect, had this been almost animatronic? Because the, yeah, the technology was there 20 years ago, 30 years ago it was there. So then the argument of whether or not it's real, whether or not it's a real human being would at least have some kind of weight to it because in your mind you're going, that is, that's a robot, that's an animatronic, but it could be alive, it could be human, which is the whole point of the movie. It's only a minor hang-up. And it's only my own hang-up because I am sci-fi. I, like, I love movies with robots in it. <laughs> I found it fascinating and wonderful. The trailer does mislead you ever, ever so slightly. There's this bit in the trailer where it makes you think that he's just going to, about midway, to, midway through, turn into a generic action movie. That There's going to be a moment where Ava just turns around and says, are you building another robot? Why are you building another robot then? <laughs> oh Ava, what are you doing? You're closing the doors. Oh I am the only one that you need. <laughs> Starts flipping around and doing backflips and slow-mo, speed up bits. That isn't the case at all, but you do worry that. And it isn't, oh. and I can say that it isn't, because this is a movie which has intelligence to it, which is wonderful, which is an amazing thing to see, bearing in mind that the other big films that we've had recently about giant robots have been the Transformers movies, which oh. I ever think but intelligent. Awkward. Now, listen, what's the name all about? Ex Machina. Yeah. It, like I say, Ex Machina is derived from the Greek deus Ex Machina, which is God from Machine. It is a term which, in Greek in Greek plays, right at the end of it, when the hero looks as if they're about to meet the end, suddenly Greek God will descend from the ceiling, suspended by a rope and a pulley in a machine. So God from the machine, God comes along and saves the day out of nowhere that doesn't quite work into it in terms of plot or narrative so it's not a spoiler me explaining this to you yeah but it's just so that you understand that this is about something other than robot it's about more than just robots it's about humanity as a whole so is it available now to yeah it's, it's definitely out now i you recommend big, it i highly recommend it unlike big hero six which is not out till friday which i do recommend as well it is out now. Go out and see. I know that some cinemas are doing like a special offer on it because it has been nominated for some awards, which I'm glad to see because it's a wonderful movie. Nice, nice. Right, listen, so to come, you've got The Theory of Everything and The American Sniper, which I imagine is probably set in America, right? Uh, no. Interesting. <laughs> we'll discuss that later. Right now, this is Neon Jungle.